I'm offended now. I am. Why are you offended? So offended. I think there's a secret life. <laughs> no, because it's assuming that I keep things from you. No, I don't tell you every fucking detail of my existence. Yeah, but dating, it's something that I would share. And I have shared. You're getting upset. I am upset. I'm never asking you about this topic again. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Rhea. Hi, I'm Marilyn. And you're listening to Who Run the World, a podcast where two best friends talk about different stories and experiences about being Arab women in the world today. And today, dear listeners, we are talking about the one thing that brings all Arab women together, no matter what, the one thing they all share, and that is my dear Rhea. Single shaming. And what is single shaming? Single shaming is making single people feel like they are incomplete, not enough, failing at life, miserable creatures, depressed, lonely individuals for being single. And as you can tell from my long description, I've been at the other end of that many a times, my whole life one would say, since I came out of the womb. I am excited to talk about this. I cannot wait. Okay, so in our society, as of what age, Rhea, are you considered, you know, open to single shaming? All children are subject to single shaming from time of conception. <laughs> Why do I say that? Why? It's because early, you know? anytime you go to a wedding or an engagement and your parent is there and they're saying, oh, congratulations, the answer is, Abid liandik which means mm -hmm. can't wait for the turn of your kids. Rough translation. So I've been told that even when I was not in the room since I was a child. <laughs> and then That's I would so say sad. maybe at 15, 16, it turned to nifrah minni. We cannot wait to celebrate your joy, pointing towards the concept of marriage. And then it eventually gets worse and worse as you grow older. There's a beautiful word for it in Arabic. Ma'ansi. Which means? Which means barren. I love being barren. You could call me Barry. <laughs> I am 31. Mm -hmm. In olden times, I would have been a total spinster at this age. <laughs> you know what else? There's another saying in Arabic. Sorry, we have to come to Oh, this. please say it. Like, let's say you graduate from Harvard and people are congratulating you. They'll say, al farha li kbire. Which means, yes, we are happy for you today, but we look forward to celebrating the great happy, which is when you get married. Even when you have something you've accomplished, it is taken away from you, weaponized into guilting you or shaming you about your singlehood. Why are other people defining what your great happy is? Yeah, there can only be one form of great happy. And that is to ensure the survival of the species. And in the case of Lebanon, the propagation of whatever religion you come from. But Rhea, how do people that are your age say it? There's always like, so what's your situation is now a question, which is a normal question where someone's yeah, asking yeah, you, you if you're dating or not. You can't people for asking you about relationship, work. That's totally, totally fine. But then the way it kind of pops up is because I current situation now in my life is I am single and I am not dating. Are you ready to mingle though? No. I'm not. <laughs> At the moment, I'm just on this path of trying to be content with myself. But let's say I say this, or if I say like, no, I'm good, or I'm not on the apps or whatever. And they're like, oh, but don't, shouldn't you think you should try? Or, oh, like, who can I fix you up with? Or, oh, like, it's as if it's something that cannot be accepted. A friend of mine told me recently that he went to a birthday party and he was the only single guy there and he's in his mid 30s basically they read him the riot act and kept asking him if he was here to find someone if he was there to hook up with someone they made him feel like something was wrong that he was single so at least this transcends genders is the good part of this gender equality through single shaming i've been told that i was jealous of other friends happiness because they're with someone and you're not and i'm not or if i'm 
friends with someone and we were both single like my friend Nadia and then she now has a boyfriend I was asked oh do you feel like you would want that too or do you feel like you're gonna lose her or like when you got pregnant they were like oh do you feel sad or it manifests itself in very subtle ways as well as if because I'm single it is assumed that my life is empty and that every time a friend that is in my community goes through a milestone like meeting someone or having a baby instead of like celebrating their joy it's like wait how do you feel about that do you feel like you're losing something and do you feel your life is sad and miserable and empty that sucks ass and also Razi, might i give you a piece of data single shaming is up since the pandemic 52 percent of people have experienced single shaming since the start of the pandemic two-fifths say they've been pitied for not having a partner living alone despite 59 percent feeling content with their relationship status and it is not only in your head 37% of single people say they're noticing an increase in questions of the nature that you are talking about. Well, there we go. The data backs it up. We have quantitative and qualitative information for you folks. All right, Razi. We've talked about the way that people single shame us. What are some of your favorite comebacks? I'll tell you a story. The other day, I was at a coffee shop in London and it was this common table. So there's this other people sitting next to me and my mom calls me and I was telling her about the latest things that were happening in my life. I was thinking about joining a club. I was thinking of a few career changes and different fun stuff, exciting stuff has been happening. And so my mom tells me, you need to promise me one thing though, that you're going to meet someone this year and start dating him and have a boyfriend. And I responded, mom, not only do I promise that to you, <laughs> I promise by December, not only will I be married, I will also be pregnant. And I'm yelling this in Arabic at the cafe. And then the people sitting next to me turned at me and they looked at me with an astonished look. And I figured out they were Lebanese because I was talking in Arabic. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm talking to my mom. And it's as if they understood exactly that context. And they just started <laughs> laughing. And then I told my mom the story and then she started laughing. So what i do now with like the lebanese older generation is i make a joke out of it or if it's someone that i don't know that well i'd be like yes yes challah inshallah soon okay so i have a, i have a few like sentences that you've probably heard of people your age as opposed to the lebanese parents i'm gonna give you a sentence you tell me how you answer okay you must be so lonely are you seeing anyone special no i'm taking time to Work Come on myself. Come on, there's such a great answer to this. Are you seeing anyone special? My therapist. <laughs> Last time this happened, I told the person that I was in therapy. If you say it like this, you like kind of really take that's cut them true. short. That's you true. Know? That's true. How long has it been since your last relationship? A real long time. No. What Come do you on, say? Crazy. Well, I have to teach you these answers. Does my Uber driver count? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Razy. <laughs> In these situations, I always give a very serious answer. See, the whole point is like, you really got to shoot back. Come on, let's do more of this. Okay, okay, okay. Why do you think you're still single? Because I'm too awesome. <laughs> I'm really bad at this type of stuff. Yes, it would be the gist of what you said, but I would say it slightly differently. Okay. I would say because it would be a shame to deprive everybody of my awesomeness. Oh, okay. The word awesome was in there. You're getting there. I feel so sorry for people who have been single during this pandemic. I feel very sorry for people who are stuck with their spouses for this pandemic. I can't believe you haven't met anyone yet. I can't believe no one's met me yet. Come on, be meaner. Be more angry. Be like more vindictive with your answer. Listen, people who've listened to this podcast know that I'm not a very vindictive person. I know, but this is the whole point. We got to teach you to build this shell around single shaming so it doesn't Okay, what, would, what does it say that I should say? It doesn't. These were all my answers. Oh, I thought you were reading off a script. No, crazy. <laughs> no, I made this shit up. What are you talking about? No, this is my specialty. Oh, wow. Come, the comeback is my specialty. Oh, my God. This is why I always say Marilyn should have been a lawyer. I would have been better than Amal. Clooney? Nothing on me. She's married. <laughs> to Clooney. I, I made all of these up. Oh, I'm very impressed. Thank you. I mean, not the not the comments, just the comebacks. Did you ever get any single shaming when you were single? Was I ever single? <laughs> That's true, by the way. Oh, I got the opposite, actually. I got the, don't you think you should spend some time alone with yourself? Oh, my God. 
don't you think you should be okay being alone before you are okay being in a relationship? Usually, if I might add, from my single friends. Love Stop. you guys. <laughs> oh my God. So basically everyone is shaming everyone else. Yeah, it would have been like, why do you need to jump back in a relationship so fast? Like you should learn to be at peace with yourself and content with your, you know, your own presence before you need somebody else. To which my answer would be like, I love myself already. I don't need a break. <laughs> my boundaries, my sense of individuality, the strength of my character, check, 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 check. But I think the point here is everyone can do whatever the fuck they want to do and that feels right for them. I have a theory about why people single shame people. It's like very deeply ingrained in survival of the species. I honest to God think it's biological. The sole purpose of existing of an animal is to reproduce so that there will be more of its species populating the earth. Honest to God, I think if you trace it back, it literally just goes back to like populating the earth. I just think like people don't think about it twice because it's like so deeply ingrained in our biology. It's like how every every young man from a good family in Lebanon should go to a UB do engineering and then be a consultant, you know? <laughs> you, my dear Rhea, are expected to procreate. Anyone who like claim that they're okay being alone and they want to be alone and they're okay having their community around them or not having their community around them, whatever, that is their path. And I think people don't know how to handle that. It's like when women say, oh, I don't want to have children and how some people can just cannot react to that. Because as you say, it goes against quote unquote nature to do yeah. that. And then on the other side of things, like I'll, I'll talk about myself. I haven't proclaimed that I want to be alone. I haven't proclaimed that I'm okay being alone. I'm doing a lot of work on myself to be okay with myself and to accept myself and to quote unquote be enough for myself. For example, I have a challenge this week to take myself out on a date and get dressed up for myself and only for myself. I love that though. Single, not single. I used to do this all the time. Do me a favor. Sit at the bar of a fancy hotel. You're dictating what my date is going to be? You know, this is what I wanted to do when, I, when the pandemic ended. Then I got knocked up and I can't drink. But I know. Um, please, one of your dates with yourselves. Can you just do this for me? I promise you that when you want to do this come September or October, I will babysit the baby <sighs> and then you can go. Thank you. So, Any hoosies. Large step back. <laughs> so basically I'm saying you don't know what's going on in people's lives for you to just make these comments or ask these questions or make these assumptions. Also, it's okay for people, for married people to comment on single people's lives. I don't go up to people who I think maybe do not have ideal marriages and say, oh, so are you lonely in your marriage? Are you happy? Do you guys feel like you're working well? Why don't you guys have kids yet? There's also these things where we don't say to people who come as a pair because we assume they're fine. Totally agree. I mean, we could argue about whether you should tell that couple something too. Depends on the situation and the couple. Yeah, and tomorrow I'm saying if, if you came and told me, listen, Rhea, I feel like you're lonely and you should try to put yourself out there, I will accept it from you because no, you're my you best won't. friend. No, you'll get upset. Don't lie to our people. I won't get upset if you say something. You will. Something. You'll be like, what the You've fuck said that are to you me. talking? You said you should go out. I have never put it in the context of it's because you're lonely. Fine, fine. But you've said before. Of course I will. Because it's what you want. Not because it's what I think you should be doing. But I also will accept it from you because you are close enough to me for me to accept that. But my point here is that even if it's someone who I barely know and just met at a party, they would also take it upon themselves to comment as well. You should just Will Smith slap them. <laughs> <laughs> We're a nonviolent podcast. So Will Smith, Chris Rock, whose side are you on? Chris Rock. Same. Sorry, Will Smith, but you're a dick. Speaking of dicks, <laughs> coming back to our story. So, Razy, you've been single shamed by strangers. You've been single shamed by family. You've been single shamed by friends. Mm. You have learned a few comebacks today. What else should we know about single shaming? Something else that annoys me about single shaming. It reduces the importance of the other types of love and partnerships you have in your life. Yes. Spot on. I was going to say something like that. I will join you in a second. I will let you finish. Thank you. I'm reading a book by Dolly Alderton. Is that Dolly Parton's cousin? No. So Dolly Alderton 
wrote a book called Everything I Know About Love, and it's a memoir of her 20s. She talks a lot about her friend group and how they've all been there for her. And then she talks about her particular best friend. Her name is Farley. She talks about her friendship and how they were there for her and the different other partnerships in her life. And she was saying, she's like, I'm tired that Farley is not considered as something for me. Mm -hmm. And how people still made her feel bad about not being with someone and making her feel incomplete where she's like, I feel mega complete because I have all these people in my life who are important relationships. If I think of myself, like, I don't feel like my life is devoid of love. Okay, I don't have romantic love, but I have a lot of very strong platonic love that is very important. I totally couldn't agree more with you. I think that we totally underrate all of the other forms of relationships. I don't want to call them platonic or not, because even platonic is like defining a relationship by what it's not. You think? And no, in the sense that it's platonic because there's no sex. You know what I mean? It's like minus. Yes. So that's why I don't like that word. I think all the other relationships are additive in their own way. Sure. And they can be intimate and they can be affectionate and they can be intellectual and they can be whatever you want them to be. And I think that as individuals, we need all of these different forms of love and stimulation and connection and peership peerhood mm. i don't know what the word is we need to have ps honestly i really think it's because of biology we and maybe also because of like the victorian representation of love and marriage we have kind of flattened this to become that the only important form of relationship is love family like love that is not geared towards having a family is also not that well accepted right agreed So it's like the love that will lead to procreation, that will lead to family, that will lead to community that we've kind of put above everybody, every other form of relationship. And I think that's bull. Romantic, sexual, familial relationship is the ultimate only thing you need. And as if everything else is a distraction on your way there. Also, it makes excusable or permissible for a lot of people when they do get into a relationship to forget about everything else around them my god yes to treat your friendships or your other types of relationships as a waiting room exactly and then be like thanks waiting room don't need you anymore people end up espousing these beliefs and that's why your peers also continue asking you these stupid questions and making making you feel bad about yourself and i will not have it anymore you will not i also understand from a personal point of view like it would be great to have someone non-platonic You mean sexual? Sexual. And to have a relationship. And I would like to have a family one day, but I will not accept to be considered less than or to be pitied. I think that also is the main word. It's like, why am I pitied for being alone? I hear you, sister. I think it's bullshit. Look, the second you get married, you'll get pitied for not having a child and asked about it all the time. That's and true. If you do, you'll get pitied about not having sex because your child is exhausting. I think there's also this um, kind of distortion of reality that people go through where they don't realize that that's just how life is. Mm -hmm. And that's just what we all experience. And there is no ultimate happiness and there is no ultimate goal. And there's just uh, trying to go through life surrounded by decent human beings who make you laugh and make you feel loved, you know, Wh whoever they may be. Totally. By just reducing things to that superficial level of, are you single? Are you not? If you're single, that means you're unhappy. If you're not, that means you're happy. Is so reductive that you don't end up digging deep with anyone. Maybe the single person is unhappy because of this other reason. Or maybe this True. married couple has a successful marriage because of this. Or maybe they're unhappy because of that. You make this assumption about what's driving their emotions and you stop being a good friend. It's like if all of a sudden, if I start dating someone and then... Everyone just assumes I'm doing great all of a sudden and then just stop asking about me. Or I end up being in a relationship and I forget about all you bitches. Mic drop. Thanks, Rhea. Imagine. After this wonderful story. Imagine. Watch this be the thing that happens. Watch this be the thing that happens. You start dating someone soon and then you like stop bothering about any of us. And with everybody. How would you feel I'm about I'm take that? on the mic. I'm going to publish an alone episode and I'm going <laughs> to ask myself how I feel about being alone. <laughs> 
How would you feel about that? This would deserve a Will Smith slap. <laughs> <laughs> How do people then ask you about it without triggering you? That's a great question. I don't know if I have an answer for that. For that not to be the only thing that you ask. Mm -hmm. And can it, should it be not the first thing you ask too? Yes. But do you get offended if it's the last thing people ask? <laughs> seriously no yes i mean it because sometimes i'm sitting with my single friends who have been single for like 15 years and they're living their best lives we meet we talk about work and we talk about whatever decisions they're making we talk about their family we talk about everything and i'm like ah, can i can't i can i can't i and then i kind of ask it hey and abel manatlub lahsab you know just before we order the bill then i feel like a dick i'm like what if they have a lot to say and i didn't create space mm -hmm. for that what if they think i'm avoiding the subject what if that's going to trigger them like this it's really complicated so i'll create a parallelisma for you so mm -hmm. if it's me and another single friend we talk about it way more openly like are you dating something are you not dating someone are you on the apps are you not and then we have like a a very chilled out conversation about it but when i'm with someone mm -hmm. who's who's in a relationship like you for example and i'm not talking about you in the specific situation i'm always waiting for them to ask the question it's like i'm just waiting i'm like let's get this over with see that's unfair though what it does for the other person is like instead of it being like and yeah by the way the other day blah blah, blah and it's just another part of the natural conversation like all the other topics this one like starts to feel really heavy and it starts to feel like because i am in a relationship i am excluded from the light-hearted relationship conversation True. and prevents you from asking me back and kills off this entire subject completely agree with you isn't that sad that is sad, but that's why we're trying to think of at what point in the conversation can someone bring it up? I think, again, it depends on how close you are with the person. If I don't know it you... It doesn't matter how close I am to the person. Yes, it does. If I don't know someone and we're sitting at dinner and they're like, so you're are you dating... You're not going to ask them about their relationship. No, yeah, but, I mean, I would never ask someone no, I barely know about their no, relationship. No, you wouldn't, but if, if they knew that I was single, right? Like, I've been in situations where it's been all couples and me, and the first question that's been asked is if I'm dating someone. So I'm not talking about that. It's I'm talking about a friend. I'm talking about an actual friend. Hey, you're catching up over coffee. No when? Middle of the conversation. How do we bring it up? Is this friend someone that you see regularly? It doesn't, like, let's say you and me. When do I bring it up? That doesn't... Well, mean... you can bring it up whenever you want. Not really. Why, you think it makes me feel uncomfortable? I actually don't bring it up until you do. That's true. You don't. Why is that? Because I don't know how it's going to make you feel. And I'm like, I don't want to upset her about this. I just want to be curious. But if me being curious is going to make her feel single shame, I'm going to stay out of it. And have you always felt that? I'd say that like being on the other side of the conversation, if you feel that like, because me, I'll be like, so who are you dating? Whatever. But if you start to feel like that question makes the other person uncomfortable, then you're like, ah, maybe this is like a no-go territory. And then you stop asking. Mm. Because obviously, I'm not going to ask you something that made you look uncomfortable, right? Again. So I'm going to be like, nah, I'm going to stop bringing that up. Interesting, interesting. I'm trying to think. I don't mind if it's brought up in a way that's like, hey, are you dating anyone? I have trouble dating. Like, that's something that doesn't come as easy to me as other people. Like, I have my own issues that I'm dealing with when it comes to dating. And so... And it has a lot to do with like body positivity, body consciousness and all this stuff. So it's not just, it's not a simple question of me. Are you dating? Are you not dating for me? But because you know that I don't mind you asking me knowing that journey, but I'm talking this is about you as my, my friend, as my very Listen, close friend. I have a lot of other friends. Let's say, you no, know, we don't live in the same country. We catch up every, every few months or whatever. They're single. I, I'm sure they feel great about it. Like I, I don't give a shit. And I'd be like, so who are you doing? You know? And so <laughs> <laughs> whatever, but, but if I ask this question once and it, and it gets responded to with like a level of discomfort that is like visible, I'd be like, oh, I stepped in shit. You well, also because you never <laughs> well i think because you don't know what's going on right if it's someone that you don't see regularly right you don't know what's going on with them so i would i would say so are you like are you seeing anyone lately have you been seeing anyone lately or yeah, have you been I'm going joking. out i only call my very promiscuous friend. i only say this to my very are you fucking anyone at the moment who you fucking these days but see like if you ask it and then they react badly you're like eh, maybe i shouldn't have brought it up i'm gonna let them do it next time and then you never talk about it so, uh, uh, okay, I think I have it in my head. 
so basically the way I would kind of lead with that or how I would approach this if I'm seeing someone who's single midway through the conversation asking so are you seeing anyone lately are you on the app and if I feel like they're uncomfortable then if they're comfortable as to talking as to why they're uncomfortable then we can talk about it and if they don't want to then you just change the subject what do you do next time you never ask them again no you ask them again there's a particular way of asking and addressing the topic where some people when they do talk about it it comes with pity or preaching Okay, so that's, that's what I'm that's saying. That's the gist of it. It's like no pity. So like if I come up to you and be like, Rhea, whose dick are you sucking this week? You will not get upset. No, I won't. Because the thing is, that does not come neither with pity, <laughs> neither with preaching at all. It comes with, you know, lots of uh, interest, especially for our readers. <laughs> But if someone comes and genuinely asks and there's no tone of judgment and there's no tone of this is what you should be doing, this is what you shouldn't be doing, you are incomplete as a person. Got it. I don't mind. And if sometimes on the off chance where you catch me on a point where this is a sore subject because my confidence is not there, because at the end of the day, whenever I have acted uncomfortably or reacted uncomfortably to that question in the past is because something was going on to do with either boy so should the follow-up question be like what is making you react this way to my question yes all right listen boys and girls everybody all of Rhea's friends you have now been given permission to ask her about her love life but you got to do it in a way that is no judgment no shaming yes no preaching yes and then if you feel like you triggered her you are permitted a follow-up question and listen young lady in her mid 30s that is not younger than me but that is older than me but i still will call young lady because because you cannot censor your questions with your friend your best friend no less your co-host no less uh, you're gonna get upset about yes. me because i didn't want to single shame you and therefore refrain from <laughs> you wouldn't want to single shame me I, i would never of course but i mean like because i was afraid that maybe that was not the topic du jour you know It, when have you ever shied away of all topics And there are many topics that I shy away from, but like what? I don't know what they are. <laughs> like what? I don't like hearing this. Are we really friends? Well, like, there are there are no topics that you don't you nope. refrain. You're joking me, really? Like when I give you shit about when you ask me about work, you don't take a break from asking me about work. Because you told me that you don't want exactly. Me to ask you. You've done the same thing. Like about when? This topic. A million times when you're like, an example. Hey, react in like the weirdest fucking way. And I'm like, Tayyip, this is not a topic we're addressing this week. And I think the beauty of this conversation, Rhea, is like if there are two friends who are listening to us and one of them is single and the other one isn't, this is exactly what's going on in their lives, in their minds, in their friendship. That's true. If I am going on a date, you are one of the first people that is informed of that. I don't know that for a fact. because It is. I don't know. I don't know. No. If for the last X weeks you've been on zero dates or you just didn't tell me about them. I don't know. <laughs> First of all, I've been on <laughs> zero dates. <laughs> zero. Like, <sighs> zip. What's wrong with all the Alistair's, Razy? Listen, it's not what's wrong. It's what's wrong with Razy that we're working on. <laughs> not the Alistair's. <laughs> no, I have a lot of intimacy issues. I don't like people getting close. That is why I have not been on a date very, very, very long time. But when I do go on a date <laughs> you or situations that I think that are dates, but they <laughs> not to be a date, which has that's also your, happened. That's your specialty, by the way. But then you become their wingman, which is wonderful. Yes. Like, See, like, that's the last date we've talked about. Because that was the last date. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> recently you told me you were on the apps again and then radio silence. No, I was not. I deleted the apps. But you told me you downloaded them around Christmas time. No, I did. The last app time I downloaded was Bumble with you. And then I copied the Bumble into Hinge because people here use Hinge. That's what I told you. I got Hinge not instead of Bumble. There you go. And that's it. Nothing happened. I've seen, I don't do you know. think I've been living this whole life? That I just... Secret life with dates. <laughs> you really do? Oh, thank you for thinking of that of me. But really, no, I've been living a very good <laughs> life. So you're thinking I'm going on these dates. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking I'm offended talked about it. I am. <laughs> Why are you offended? So offended. I think there's a secret life. <laughs> no, because it's assuming that I keep things from you. No, I don't tell you every fucking detail of my existence. 
Yeah, but dating is it's something that I would share. And I have shared. All right. You're getting upset. I am upset. I'm never asking you about this topic again. <laughs> no. No, I want you to. <laughs> see. Sure. No, no C. <laughs> no C. This is not a C. This is not a C moment. I'm trying to make the point for all the other people in the room who are afraid to ask their friends about their relationships. The point here is not about, it's about asking without pity. No, I don't have pity for you. I think you're a dick face. I think you're a dick face. And then third, when you're good enough friends with someone, which I thought we were, that you would ask the person what's going on for some people like for me sometimes it's a deeper issue and you can ask and not assume that she has a whole life that she's not telling her best friend about that's all i'm saying okay fine i will ask but if you get upset about me asking i never got upset (laughs) you're upset right now (laughs) i'm upset not because you asked i'm upset because i feel like you were omitting asking and assuming that I was up to doing things without telling you. No, of course, I was not assuming that you were not telling me. I'm just saying. You know, that's what you said. I, I haven't asked. That's all I was saying. <laughs> no, you said. It's like a missed Maxwell episode. I think it's important to have this honest, like, this is what reality is on both sides of that conversation. So fuck y'all who are shaming, single shaming anybody. But the, this, this sensitivity around this or other topics, by the way, let me just, let me generalize this for a second. You know, any sensitivity around any topic, like if there's a friend who's sensitive about bananas, it doesn't matter. And you know, like, you have to use a phallic symbol. <laughs> Whatever. Politics, right? Like I'm not saying and this, is, this has anything to do specifically with the, the fact that this is about relationships or that you and I are on different sides of the coin with that. Because like you could talk about politics, you could talk about whatever, right? Mm. It's just whenever you feel like a friend is in a sensitive place about an issue, their own, the world, the Russia-Ukraine war, like it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> you know? That's what I'm trying to say. And it has, it's not specific to the relationship. You kind of step off it. You use your emotional EQ to know when to ask and when not to ask about it. That's true. That's all I was saying. Sure. I agree with you on that. <laughs> what I got upset at. It's not the asking and not asking. It's you assuming that I would go out on all these dates. Why would you get upset at that? Because it feel it made. Would me you f- prefer I assume that you haven't been on any dates over the last year and that's that? Yes, because it's the Why? truth. Doesn't matter. I don't think you're lying to me. You could have gone on a date and not told me. I wouldn't be upset. If you told somebody else, I'd be upset. <laughs> if you haven't told anybody, I mean, it's yours. You know. Hold the phone. <laughs> so you're saying this is the stages <laughs> of how upset or not upset you would get. Is that number one, if I went on a date, didn't tell a soul, I'd be fine. Including you. That's all right. That's okay. If I went on a date and told one soul, it depends which soul. If you told people in London, I wouldn't get upset. Okay, so that's the second degree. <laughs> Third degree. If I went on a date, told people in London and told people in Dubai. Overseas via WhatsApp, I would totally get upset. And they told you. Oh my God, would I get upset. Super upset. I understand the gradient. Okay, everybody, you've settled this. Do ask your friends about their relationship status, even if you think it might be a sensitive topic, but make sure that it is not coming from a place of judgment, shame, pity. Don't preach. Yes. And then if you get it wrong, say you're sorry. For all you people out there in couples feel that you're being left out of the fun single conversations. Totally. Which is something that I also heard that you said. I did. I think if we all treat each other with respect and no shame and non-judgmental, that everyone can just be part of the conversation whether you're single, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're in a polyamorous relationship, whatever you're in, everyone should join into the conversation. And if we just removed shame from it, then it would be a cool conversation, y'all. You heard it here first. (laughs) Here's an invitation 
to you asking your friends about their relationship status this week without offending them. And if you want to ask me about my relationship status, you can email us at whoruntheworldpodcast.com <laughs> or on Instagram at, at whoruntheworldpod. Marilyn, thank you for embarking in this conversation with me and for thinking that I went on 20 dates this year, but I actually went You're on welcome. zero. Thank you. That's does well for my confidence listen and uh we will have hopefully one day when i'm ready to talk about it um why it is that it's been a tough time for me dating one day soon not now not in the near future but soon inshallah cliffhanger cliffhanger right keep on listening guys keep on listening and like i told my mom i promise you by the end of <laughs> december i will be married and pregnant how where when we shall see. Stay We're tuned. looking for candidates, guys. I'm the casting director. Give me a call. You'd be a good casting director. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>